Another important concept in relational databases are foreign keys. The relational model does not provide explicit links or pointers. So if you want to refer to a particular tuple in a table, the idea is we can use the key attributes of this table. We can use the values of the key attributes as an address identifying the tuple we want to refer to. So let's say we want to refer from a relation R to the tuples of a relation S. The idea is that we then add the primary key attributes of the relation S to the attributes of the relation R. So we extend the relation R with the primary key attributes of S. And we use these attributes to refer from R to S. Such reference is only stable if the address of the tuple that we refer to does not change. That means the key attributes of these tuples that we are referring to should not be updated. So we've already discussed this before. When choosing primary keys for our tables, we should choose keys for which we are sure that the attributes are never updated. Such a foreign key implements a one-to-many relationship. Let's have a look at an example. Here we have the table students and results. In the results table, we have an attribute SID that is a foreign key referring to the students table. So for instance, the SID 101 here refers to the student 101 in the students table. So it refers to George Orville. The SID 102 in the results table refers to the student 102 in the students table, Elvis Presley, and so on. It's important to understand that foreign keys are not keys themselves. In the results table, the SID does not uniquely identify the row in the results table. We have multiple rows in the results table with the same SID. So what happened here? We have a SID in the results table that does not refer to any student in the students table. So we would like to exclude this. We would like to make sure that such foreign key references indeed point to a valid row in the other table. So what we want is an existence guarantee for the key values in students. We want that the SID column in the students table forms a dynamic domain for the values of the SID column in the results table. So we can use only those SID values in the results table that also appear in the students table. In the create table statement in SQL, we can declare foreign key constraints. For example, here we are creating the table results and we declare that the SID of the table results references the column SID of the table students. And this enforces what we've discussed on the last slide. So more precisely, this foreign key constraints enforces that for every tuple T in the results table, if the SID of T is not null, then there exists a tuple U in the students table that has the same SID as T. So for every row in the results table, if the SID is not null, then there is a matching row in the students table with the same SID. It's important to note that foreign keys are allowed to be null. If we want to exclude this, we have to declare this foreign key as not null, as we've seen before. So this is similar to null pointers in programming languages. We can declare a pointer, but this pointer does not need to point anywhere. We can set it to null. The database ensures the referential integrity 
by enforcing all foreign key constraints. Once the foreign key constraint is declared, the following update operations will violate the constraint. For instance, if we try to insert a row in the results table without a matching row in the students table, the database management system will reject this update. It's also problematic if we delete a row from the students table that is referenced from the results table. And there's different options how the database management system could react. The database management system could reject this update. Another option is that the deletion cascades. So this means that if we delete a tuple from the students table, then all of the tuples that reference this tuple will also be deleted. And you can clearly see that this deletion can cascade further and further. A third option is that if we delete a row in the students table, then all of the references to this row will be set to null. And of course it's not random which of these actions is chosen. You can configure this using SQL. You can say on delete cascade if you want the deletes to cascade, or you can configure that foreign key references should be set to null and so on. Such foreign key references only allow us to reference keys, primary or secondary. We are not allowed to reference non-key attributes. If we want to reference a row in a table with a composite key, then the foreign key has to consist of the same number of attributes over the same domains. It is not required that these attributes have the same name. In our relational schemas, we denote foreign keys with an arrow. And we write composite keys in brackets. So for example, in the results table, we have a composite foreign key consisting of category and number that references the exercises table. And we have a foreign key sit that references the students table. If we write it in this way, we do not tell which key we are referencing. And if we don't mention the key, then by default we are referencing the primary key. 